Hi, welcome again uh, to Dvija Projects. In this session, we are going to um, uh, you know understand about the types of projects that we have, and just understand uh, you know what is possible in terms of how we go about solving, uh, as well as the whole documentation and all those aspects. So, this slide is going to talk about hypothesis. Um, if you're a science student, uh, you, you've read about quality, you've read about Six Sigma, you all would have heard of this word hypothesis, right? Um, uh, to simplify this for, for discussion, uh, we all make educated guesses every time there is a situation or every time there is a problem for us to solve, right? Now, in the corporate world or um, more so in, in the academic uh, side as well. Uh, when there is a problem or there is a project, uh, you know, it's not a question of just putting in uh, what our educated guess is in terms of what could be causing the problem or how we believe the problem can be solved and then we don't simply submit the report, right? Um, uh, what the point that I'm trying to make is with all the skills uh, that we saw in, in one of our previous lessons about the management skills, the critical thinking skills, and the technical skills. Uh, you know, uh, we use all that combined with the academic knowledge in terms of the domain knowledge that we have uh, to come up with certain assumptions, right? And by nature, every time there's a situation, right, your mind, uh, uh, you know, immediately uh, starts attributing certain uh, uh, you know, factors that could be causing a particular problem. So it's no different when it comes to academic project, we are going to be tempted. Uh, it's no different when, you, when it comes to any solving any business problem, we are going to be tempted to come up with certain educated guesses, right? We cannot avoid that. Now, however, it doesn't stop with that. So we bring in this term hypothesis, uh, wherein it's nothing but a statement. Uh, the difference is the statement uh, initially is an educated guess. You may also use the term a leap of faith assumption, right? Uh, now this leap of faith assumption is not just coming uh, out of nowhere. It is backed up by your years of education. It is backed up by your years of experience. It is backed up by what you've experienced uh, uh, in similar situations. Um, so those are the statements. But for you to really move forward, for you to sell this uh, observation of yours, uh, what I mean by sell is to convince others that yes, this is what you believe uh, is a factor, a critical factor that is causing a problem. Or if you have made a guess about a potential solution on how a, a, a problem can be solved, you know, we also need to back it up with evidence. So that's what a hypothesis is where you take an educated guess, you take a statement, and then you take that through uh, various tests by researching, right? You could be num crunching numbers to prove it. Uh, you could be just going into a laboratory, testing and proving it. Uh, but basically, we all need to prove that the hypothesis that we came up is a valid hypothesis and hence is relevant. Again, it could be for what is causing the problem or when you come to the solutioning phase and what you list as one of the options that can help you how to handle and solve the problem. We now come to the next slide on common project types, right? In the previous slide, we learned about how hypothesis is, uh, is it, it's not just an educated guess, right? What started off as an educated guess uh, you know, had to be proved using the research. So what you see here is a listing of various techniques, uh, uh, you know, that we are also listing under project types on how you go about proving your hypothesis to be true. Well, your hypothesis may also be proved false uh, when you take it through any of these uh, uh, types that are listed here. For example, a laboratory, right? You are a chemist, are you pursuing science? Um, well, uh, to prove your hypothesis, you may have to do some, uh, you know, few laboratory experiments. Uh, literature, you're a law student. You can look at historical data. You could look at all the, uh, you know, all the case studies 
from the past on how certain cases were handled. So you can go through literature. You could also do a meta-analysis, right? Uh, wherein the data manipulation and analysis is involved. Uh, you know, you are an engineer, you're trying to look at ways and means of optimizing the performance, and you want historical data of all the operating parameters for over maybe many, many years, uh, coming from, uh, you know, all the chips that are there, from all the sensors that are there. So meta-analysis is a ways, uh, you know, can provide you the ways and means of doing that number crunching to manipulate the data and analyze. Intervention, right? You're a medical student. Uh, you know, you might need certain volunteers for you to perform uh, a study, uh, which is, of course, approved, uh, by, you know, legally, and you also legally enroll these volunteers. So intervention could be a way to prove your hypothesis uh, to be either true or false. Question and collection of data, right? There could be a policy matter that you are researching on. Uh, you know, you could be a social welfare student. You're pursuing your PhD in social welfare. Now, how do you go about this? You know, a policy matter, right? So you, you have to prepare a questionnaire. You go about, uh, uh, you know, try and, and, and survey uh, a particular population, you know, could be living in a particular area. Uh, and, and using the questionnaire, you're going to gather that information to understand the impact of the policy issue. Uh, finally, data handling, right, which is historical data analysis. A simple thing could be, you know, you're a commerce or a finance student, uh, you're trying to perform a stock analysis. Uh, you want to look at historical data in terms of how a particular script or a company has performed uh, over a period of time, uh, especially for the mutual fund. You may be interested in knowing how it has performed over many, many years, uh, you know, both in bearish and bullish conditions in the market. Um, so, so these are, uh, you know, uh, some of the leading ways, and I think we have fairly covered all the streams out there in the academia on how you can prove your hypothesis to be valid, well, if you're unlucky, it could be invalid too. But you better be unlucky because you don't want to pick up an hypothesis, uh, which is merely an educated guess without any of these analysis, go all the way into problem solving, and then you deploy the result and you realize that it's not working, right? So these are very, very important for any student uh, to ensure that they take them through these types. Now, finally, depending on the nature of uh, uh, the course that you're pursuing, uh, the document or the report that you're going to submit is either going to be a research thesis or a project thesis. Let's understand what a project thesis is, right? It consists essentially of two elements. Uh, one, uh, the project, and second is the accompanying asset. Isn't that so simple to understand, right? Looks like my job is done now. Uh, so a project thesis, yes, uh, the, the project report, right? Yes, you want to give the entire essay. Um, this is very relevant if it is, uh, you know, if you are in business studies or you're talking about social welfare or any public administration uh, where, uh, you know, you may have used questionnaire to gather details, but it is all about interpretation uh, of the law, for example, if it is about a policy matter, and then the impact of it and what the general public is feeling about it. So it's going to be aggregation of all these facts and providing a good narrative uh, so that uh, the essay uh, will, will, will help people understand uh, what the issue is all about and what uh, 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 you know, is the outcome of all the market uh, research that has gone into it. So that's the project thesis. We now move on to research thesis. Uh, research thesis uh, is very relevant, uh, especially for a science or an engineering student. Uh, this can also be very relevant for uh, finance students, especially if there's number crunching that is going to be involved. Um, and this is also an extended uh, research paper, wherein you have gone into a very systematic inquiry. So you had a hypothesis and then you would have either gone into a laboratory to test or there could be an intervention in terms of enrolling multiple volunteers. So uh, the time duration could be um, a lot, it could run into many, many months uh, for you to even organize, uh, get uh, enough information for you to convincingly prove uh, or validate the 
hypothesis. So it's a systematic, uh, systematic uh, inquiry into a phenomenon, uh, which is the educated guess, uh, or which is the observation that uh, you, know, you could potentially be reporting. Um, and then uh, it is also a systematic inquiry into how you are attempting to solve using all the project types that we saw earlier. So finally, uh, this is, this is uh, it will have uh, the entire description in terms of the collection and analysis of information that you've got um, and all the lab results, uh, if so, uh, or the historical data, and then the various formulas that you may have used to crunch those uh, numbers, right? So that's uh, the research thesis. Thank you.